I want Canary Mission to listen right now. It is literally a disgrace that I am not on your platform yet. The fact that I can sit here and try to live with myself, that I, as a Jewish person whose grandfather survived Auschwitz, the fact that I'm not on your platform means that I am not doing enough and I'm not doing the bare minimum to speak out against literal genocide and settler colonialism. And I cannot live with myself knowing that I am not doing enough. So what I'm asking you, Canary Mission, is I am asking you to compile every single thing that I have ever said against the settler, colonial, genocidal, Zionist entity. Every single thing. And by the way, I haven't been just speaking out since this month or so. This has been years now. So I'm asking you to actually do your research and to take your job seriously. And I want you to compile every single thing, every single document, every single tweet, every single piece of digital footage where I've spoken out against Zionism, and I want you to compile it and I want you to frame it. And I will hang it in my home and I will show it to my children to show them where I stood when Zionism was still around. Because Zionism is going to end. We will dismantle settler colonialism. We will compost this. We will build relational futures in a free Palestine where every single person is treated as a full human being and has full human rights that has full sovereignty and agency, land sovereignty and body sovereignty. And the fact that anyone can hear freedom as a call for genocide attests to the logic of the colonizer who can only imagine existing if it comes at the expense of someone else. They can only imagine living in a place that is atop the ruins of another population and atop the dead bodies of the population that they expelled. Y'all need to end Zionism to get free. So Canary Mission, put me on your list and take your job seriously. I want every single document, every single piece of writing, everything that I've ever said opposing genocide. I want every single piece of evidence. And I want you to frame it. And I want to hang it on my home. And I want to show it as a badge of honor to my children, to my great-grandchildren, to my great-great-grandchildren. To all of our offspring. And I know that we will get free. We will dismantle this violent regime. And we will build relational futures, decolonial futures, futures that include the right of return for every single Palestinian who is forcibly exiled from their home in the Nakba. Reparations for every single Palestinian and their offspring. There will be a reckoning of how this happened. Zionist Jews will heal their intergenerational trauma. They will sit in their shame and grief as opposed to recycling it. They will take accountability. al Hasidus teaches us, Jewish mysticism, that the world was created for teshuva, for the process of rectification, repair, and return. The Zayar Kadosh talks about how the world was created for teshuva. The Rebbe's teach and the Sfarim teach that every single day, a baskol, a heavenly voice, a really deep ancestral voice, emanates from Sinai and says, return to me, wayward ones. Rabbi Nachman of Breslov in Tarevav, in Likute Maran, talks about anazamin lemahave, says that I am ready to do teshuva means that I am ready to become, I am ready to step into my humanity. This is a moment of teshuva, of reckoning. We need to do better. We need to unlearn white supremacy and settler colonial genocide. Ending Zionism and being able to create paradigms that are relational, that uphold freedom and consent and agency, that take accountability through land back, through reparations, through a decolonial program. That is what's needed in this moment. The whole point of the world is for teshuva. In the words of Rabbeinu, Schus yagen aleinu, anna zamin lemahave, as he quotes from the Zohar. Are we ready to step into our full selves? 
Because so long as folks are upholding Zionism, they're dehumanizing themselves and cutting themselves off from their own humanity. So Canary Mission, first of all, it's despicable what you've done. It's draconian. And it's just a reflection of your inner violence. You, before you're doing this and policing any single Palestinian for existing, you're doing that violence to yourself. I know because I was a Zionist. I did the same thing. I had chronic pain because of it. I've been to psych wards because of it. But I actually dealt with my ancestral trauma from the Holocaust. That's the difference. I didn't just recycle it. I was willing to actually sit in it and confront it. And now I don't have to recycle it on everyone else. And in fact, as the grandson of someone who survived Auschwitz, it's the obvious position to oppose genocide. So I want you, in the next 12 hours, to get me on your website. And I want it to be thorough. And I want it to be quick. And I want you to send it to me. And I want to frame it. And I will show it to generations of offspring when we will sit with the Suda of David Malka Meshicha. We will sit at the festival and the feast of the end of days, which happens with the laughter of Yitzchak, in the biggest place in Gehenna, in the Sukkah of the Livyasan, and we'll sit there laughing and rejoicing on how we were able to heal our trauma and the place that was the most wounded actually served as the portal for transformation, for us to remember our humanity. It served as a portal for teshuva. It served as an anazam in the moment of being able to say, I am ready to become. I'm ready to step into my humanity. I am ready to realize the wholeness of my being. There's no better time than now. So since you're so good, you'll find my address. I'm waiting for a frame document. <laughs>